This is a short video on performing SQL queries in ArcMath, and more specifically using the query builder that's built into Arc Desktop. Uh, it's very easy, simple to use. Um, it allows you to write uh, expressions without actually having to type anything. Uh, and as you'll see, it's really essential to parsing out information and selecting certain things that you want to use. Below are some of the more common functions used. You can get very complicated with some of your SQL expressions, but uh, here you can see that uh, these operators are um, most often used. The equals operator at the top is by far the most commonly used um, and that's really just because it's used to pick out specific information uh, for example you might want to pick out all the records where county equals uh, Miami-Dade or city equals Tampa certain things like that uh, the is function is very similar but it's for uh, mostly picking out null values uh, because when you have a null value, there's no information there. So you can't equal something that doesn't exist. So you use the is null function rather than equals null. Uh, the and or like and not functions, I'll get into a little bit more in the demonstration. It's a little easier to explain them as they're done. So we will see how those are used. So here's the data that we'll be using. It's um, just about 20 or so points. Uh, these are a list of grocery stores and they all have uh, geocoded information with them as you can see um, and we're going to be parsing through some of these and picking out some of the stores that we'd like to work with. So uh, as you know you can get to uh, select by attributes two different ways. You can either uh, come up to your selection and hit select by attributes here and it pulls up your query builder or you can come to find it right here by select by attributes and it's essentially the same thing the only difference is when you do select by attributes from the table here it knows that you want to work with this data whereas if you do select by attributes here uh, you have to specify what data you want to pull from. Uh, I just out of habit uh, prefer using the builder from the table but it's up to you. So the first thing uh, we'll do is we'll just uh, simply use the uh, equals operator. Um, in this case I'm going to pull out the um, all the records that fall in Tallahassee which in this case is all of them but to demonstrate, I just come down and I find the field I want to pick from. So in this case, it's physical city, and I can just double click on that. I never have to type anything. Uh, now, because I've uh, clicked on that and have uh, it highlighted, it's very faintly, um, has a gray box around it. I can hit get unique values, and it pulls all the values from that field that I have selected. If I were to be selected on physical state and do the same thing, it would pull out Florida obviously. So if I come back to Physical City, um, I'm going to want to find all of the records from phys that have the Physical City of Tallahassee. So I just say Physical City equals so I have Physical City uh, as my field and then my operator is equals and then I can just double click on Tallahassee. And you notice that Tallahassee, um, because it's a string or a text, it has these um, quotes or single quotations or apostrophes around it. That's so that um, the SQL query understands uh, when to start and end its search parameters. Uh, numbers, it doesn't need that because those are just stored digits and it knows when they start and finish. Um, so uh, we'll see that when we uh, search for some certain zip codes but before you hit apply you can always check your um, expression and, and verify it so that checks out it says verified 
Um, if I were to get rid of one of these and hit verify, then uh, it tells me that there's an issue, uh, invalid, uh, and this is this is why. Um, so I can just hit OK and add my little apostrophe back and hit apply. And so it selects 25 out of 26 because they're all located in Tallahassee, except for my last one, which is uh, has a null value. So uh, speaking of null values, um, I can actually show you that if I try to say equals null, which is located right here, and apply or verify that, it doesn't take because uh, you can't equal no data. Rather, you have to replace that equals operator with is, which you can type, or you can double or just click is here. So if I verify that, it's successful. And I can hit apply. And so you can see it picks out that last one because they're all null values. So that's equals and is pretty simple. Uh, Again, with numbers, if I uh, come to physical zip and equals, I'll just pick out some unique values and I can say this first one. You can see there's no uh, quotations or apostrophes around that because it's digits. And I can hit apply and it picks out those six records that fall within that zip code. So I'll clear that out and I will show you the OR function next. Now, OR functions is for selecting uh, records that might have different values um, in their field. So in this case, what we're going to do is uh, actually select those zip codes again, but we're going to select two different zip codes using the OR function. So I'll just double click on physical zip equals 32301. And then because I want another zip code, let's say we want 32308, I would say, give me all the zip codes that equal this or all the zip codes that equal 32308. But you need to rewrite the expression because if you just double click 32308, that actually doesn't work. It thinks you're looking for where zip code equals 32301 or I don't know what to search for equals 32308 because this could be another field that has the same values. So you need to make sure that you have physical zip in there twice and you can hit apply and it picks all of those out. So very important that when you're writing AND functions um, as well as OR functions, you need to rewrite the expression multiple times so that it knows which field to search for that value in. So that's an OR function. Um, a lot of people get that confused with AND function because they would think that I want all the zip codes that equal 32301 and all the zip codes that equal 308, but in actuality it's the OR function. The AND function works in that you select out uh, records or um, values from the same record. So in this case, uh, we might want to select records where the store ID equals 188799 and it's located in Tallahassee. So the way we would do that again is say store ID equals, we can just type 188799 and physical city equals Tallahassee. Verify, it works, I can apply. Now you would have never really have to do this because the store ID is unique, so it really wouldn't um, matter in this situation, but if you had two stores that were 188799 but located in different cities this would be a good way to pull out the one that falls within Tallahassee. So you can see the difference between the AND function which is for um, values in the same record 
and an OR function, which is for different values within a similar field. The like function is very similar to the equals function. It helps you pull out um, information, specific values that you're looking for. Um, in this case, I'm going to do something a little bit more complex in that I'm going to use the like function to pull out all of my stores that have a physical address that um, is on Monroe Street. Um, this will help me um, so that I don't have to go through and say and use the OR function to select um, the address that equals 5810 North Monroe or an address equals 1700 North Monroe. Rather, I can just say, show me all of the ones that have Monroe in the name. So to do that, I'm going to come down to physical address. I'm going to say like, and then I'm going to type this. There's the um, apostrophe, and then I'm going to use what's called an inline variable. Uh, so it's going to search through every record for uh, the word Monroe, which is going to be my variable. And to do that, I use the uh, percentage sign, uh, which I typed, or you can click it here. I'm going to type Monroe and then finish off, close off my search. So this expression is saying, give me all the records from the physical address field that have the text Monroe in it. And I can verify and it worked. So if I hit apply, you can see that there's five records that fall within Nor uh, Monroe Street. Um, and actually, if I wanted to be more specific, I could say North Monroe and apply, and it actually dropped out that one here that's on South Monroe. Um, I could do the same thing as well for um, specific addresses if I uh, wanted to find just that. If I knew that this was 2525 but didn't know what road it was on, I could pick that up as well. The other thing you can do, um, this is kind of like pulling a um, selection switch, but if I come in here and use the uh, not function in front of it, uh, it's going to give me the opposite of everything that's like 2525. So if I apply that, it's going to select everything that is not like 2525. So the not function is, is useful um, if you're trying to figure out some things that aren't like what you want. And then the last thing is I don't have any information in this data that is um, related to date or time, but something really easy you can do if you do have that information is you can use the um, greater than, um, less than, or the greater than equal to, or the less than equal to, um, to symbolize date ranges. So if you had a field called date, you could say, uh, give me all the dates that are uh, greater than um, a specific date, um, which might be a few days ago, um, up until today's date, which could be um, where the date field is uh, less than or equal to today's date, which would be for 5.2017. Um, and so that would be the uh, basic um, SQL expression. That might not be perfect, but that's the idea, is that you can set a date range. Um, and so right here, by using a greater than sign, it actually does not include 4.1, because it's showing, saying, give me everything greater than 4.1, which would be April 2nd and beyond, but cap it off at everything that's less than or equal to the 5th. So that would include the April 5th. If I wanted to fix that, I could um, use the greater than, oops, greater than and equal to function to include uh, the first. So that's using those functions to select out dates. Lastly, uh, if I clear this out, uh, you can use SQL queries for definition queries as well. It's the same concept. You um, open up the properties, come to the definition query tab, and go to query builder. And you can select out specific things here. 
And by doing so, you can um, use that layer and it will only um, work with what you have selected out rather than the layer as a whole. So in this case, if I wanted to use um, only things that were in this specific zip code, 32301, and hit OK, hit OK and get rid of that. And if I minimize that, you can see there's the only the six records that fall within that zip code rather than the um, 20 other records that are in the set. So that's uh, basics to uh, SQL query structure and using SQL Query Builder. It's really convenient. Um, once you get used to it, you start building queries and you never actually type anything. You just start clicking all the buttons and you can build some really complex things. Um, I encourage you to get more practice. Um, kind of challenge yourself to pick out uh, really complicated things, try to make really intricate selections. There's a lot of help online with this. Um, here's my information and here's the desktop uh, website for building a query expression. Thank you for watching.